Welcome to the Money Show live <laughs> with your res- your host and resident attraction and sex part, my Playboy's Bunny. <laughs> that wasn't stressful at all. Can you guys hear me? <laughs> exactly. Nothing like the first time. I love it. Oh my goodness. I am so excited to be here. This is going to be a fun time. I'm really, I'm really excited about this. So, it was kind of funny. So, I was thinking about, as I was getting ready this morning, I was thinking, this is kind of like first date stress. Like, you want to look your best. You don't want to look old. You don't want to, you want to look good. You want to make a good first impression. And it's the same thing like with first dates because everyone... Everyone just wants to bring their best. So I'm trying to bring my best to you guys this morning, and I'm glad you're here. Um, We have a lot of good stuff to talk about. First and foremost, okay, so I've got Fort Worth over here. He is uh, moderating. Thank you, loud and clear. Um, He's moderating. He's my producer over here. He's fielding your questions and your um, comments. If he responds, it's (laughs) your life. (laughs) I need to turn chat off so it's not like constantly (laughs) distracting me. I'm excited to be here. This is going to be fun. This is going to get more smooth, I swear, guys. First and foremost, let's talk about how to get your uh, ex back because that's an easy one to just like pop out. So my first response to that is always, are you sure you want to? Are you sure you really want to get your ex back? Because usually, nine times out of ten, as soon as you get your ex back within a week, you remember why you didn't have, you weren't together anymore anyway. You know, it's like, um, there's the honeymoon phase, those first few days, and you're like, I'm so in love with this person, I've, you know, I can't believe that we ever broke up. And then at about the weak point, you start going, oh, oh yeah, I hate this thing about you. This is why. This is because you do this, because you say this, because you can't stand it when I do that, because you hate my mother. Whatever the reason, you quickly remember what the problem was and you go, okay, we can't, we can't do this anymore. But I will say, if you want to get your ex back, there are some great ways to do it. Number one, don't do anything. And I think this is the biggest problem for men in particular because you guys want to do stuff. You're, you're doers. You're active. You're not passive people just by nature. It's just an important first step to not do anything when you're trying to get an ex back. The best thing that you can do for yourself when you... Um, want to attract a a girl who's been in your life or a new girl is to work on yourself, to bring your best every day, all the time, uh, to the situation. So get in shape, dress better, work on your hygiene. I I won't be, this will not be a, a complete selling machine, but truly Fort Worth is working on basic training right now, which is a great source for all of these things. Ways to up your game and just remember everything that you need in order to um, just bring your best every day. But something to remember, and we've podcasted about this before too, so feel free to scroll through all of our podcasts. But the great thing about girls is if we're interested, we will never lose touch with where you are in life. So whether it be on social media or um, just checking in with you or talking to your mother or your sisters. We always know where important men in our lives are in the world. So whether you're successful, whether you're getting in shape, we watch your timeline. We may not always uh, like comment or like whenever we see you on, on Facebook or Instagram or whatever, but we're always watching. We always know where people from our past are today. Sometimes that's like, 
thank God I'm not with him anymore because this is where I would be in my life. And sometimes it's like, I really fucked up. <laughs> I really made a mistake and I sh that, sh that life should have been mine. So a great way to get your ex back is to do nothing. Don't reach out to her, but live your best life and be comfortable showing it. Uh, especially, I would say, on social media. A lot of guys, unless it's for business, you just hate social, uh, and I totally get it. Twitter is the exception. I don't, I don't really feel like Twitter is a social... Actually, it's the only social media platform because it's actually just a continuous conversation. All the others are like peacocking platforms, let's call them. But you need to peacock a little bit if you're looking for the right woman. So you need to show yourself living a great life, a life of adventure, a life of looking good, a life of improving your health, uh, a life of being active and exciting and having a full uh, social calendar, whether you do or not. Uh, and you need to just do your best every day to, to make yourself the most attractive candidate ever that you've ever been. And that will attract her as well. Um, and you need to give it time. I'm looking over at my notes. You need to give it time because it doesn't happen right away. You don't know what she's got going. She's got probably some people in the background that are um, keeping her occupied right now, or at least that she's hoping are keeping her occupied. It may be as much that she's just kind of watching and trying to get, you know, get in with somebody. But either way, she's probably watching you also. And you may be the one that she's waiting on. So I don't really recommend getting back with an ex. It usually does not end well. But if you're going to, the key is to do nothing. That's kind of anticlimactic. It's like, Really, really the trick is to do nothing. And men are terrible at doing nothing. You're awful at it. You're terrible. Now, does dick size really matter? And I got all kinds of teasing because I said penis on Twitter instead of dick. But you guys knew what I meant. Does size really matter? Does size really matter to a woman? The quick answer, which I'm not known for, the quick answer is not really, not really. Just like um, I tweeted a few days ago, the more you guys talk about your dick and balls, the less impressive it generally is. So just don't do that. It's a weird, it's a weird kind of flex that just kind of turns us off in a lot of ways until we've actually experienced it and then we all want to talk about your huge dick and balls. We, we want to talk about them swinging. We want to talk about how impressive they are. We want to talk about, but until we've actually experienced it and until we're locked in on your cock, like we talk about all the time, getting girls locked in on you, it's, it's not a good idea to focus on them. So dick pics, never a good idea, especially once you, when you haven't yet attracted that girl yet. I love getting dick pics from Fort Worth, and he never will send them to me. He's such a stick in the mud. But they, we love talking about your cock size after we're locked in, not before. The, um, the other part about that is once you're physically together, once you're physically sexually active with someone, uh, even if it's for the first time, don't think about your dick size. If you're proud of it, if you're insecure about it, either way, you just fuck her like it's your last fuck and hers. Because there's, there's a confidence there that goes a long way with women in bed. And if you are just, if you are, are not confident in your dick size, if you don't feel like you're terribly gifted, you just... Give, you just give it all you got. I mean, I think you can fuck harder when you're not as as large, you know, in that area. And girls love to be fucked hard. Keep fucking her harder and harder and harder until she needs you to stop. 
So you just have at it. Larger, the larger the dick, the easier you kind of have to go, especially on the front end until you kind of learn each other's rhythms and nuances and the way she likes to be fucked uh, and the way it still is satisfying to you as well. But truly, it's, it's not that big of an issue when you're in the moment, especially when you're in the moment with a brand new partner. It's just the excitement takes over, the adrenaline takes over, the, the sexual energy takes over. There's probably some alcohol involved, let's face it, especially with that first time. And, and it just matters that you're enthusiastic, you're excited about being there with her, she's enthusiastic or she wouldn't be there. And, and I'm just gonna say, do whatever you can to not worry about your cock size. And apparently we have a question. Is girth underrated? Is girth underrated? That's a great question. Um, I would say that girth is a little bit important. I'm going to say girth is, is important because you just feel it on the, on your, on the walls of your vagina more. And that sensation brings more pleasure to the female. So I would say girth, maybe even more so than length, is important. Does that sound good? <laughs> Any other thoughts that I need to be aware of? Best text openers. Does anybody else have any questions about dick size, pleasure, girth? I'm, I'm open to all, all suggestions here. I love it. Okay. <laughs> Another question that we had was talking to, earlier when we were just discussing was about fucking single mothers, whether single mothers or, or women with, that have not yet had kids are easier to bed, right? That was essentially what we were talking about. Are single moms easier to have sex with? Yeah. I would say a lot depends on the age. I would say it all, first and foremost, it depends on her age. Because single moms, yes, they've already had sex, and so, yes, they may be craving it more. They crave that sexual attention more. Uh, so in that camp, you may be able to actually have sex with them more easily, but at the same time, they're going to be a lot quicker to want someone to play stepdad to their existing children uh, it's certainly a red flag if they have a bunch of kids from a bunch of different baby daddies. Um, and, and there's just going to be a lot more like baggage there. And it may not be as pleasurable to you because some women get absolutely destroyed by childbirth. Um, so I would say that in that camp, women are maybe easier to have sex with if they've already had children, if they're single moms because they're looking for their replacement, for uh, the replacement to their ex who, you know, left them in the dust. The flip side of that is, I would say, younger single girls going through their hoe phase, which is inevitable, then they're not going to be, they're going to be pretty easy to, to bed. Um, but older, I would actually say they come with more restrictions. You don't really want them as much. You don't really, you know, they're not really as attractive. The, the older they are, the more rigid they get, the less fun they are, the more rules they have for you, uh, the more restrictions, the more demands, and the less leeway they have in actually asking for any of these things. Because they look like hell, they haven't taken care of themselves, they've got every red flag in the book because they're never married, no kids. So I would say like, what, beyond like 35 or so is a good like cutoff number that never married, no kids, they're not going to be as, I, I would say they're not going to be as easy to just have sex with. They're going to come with their list of demands and they're used to vibrating their clit to death and uh, not needing a man to give them sexual pleasure. 
and they probably don't come as easily either, either because they single girls who have been single their whole lives and not even had children or anything like never had that like person promising to love and honor and cherish them forever i would say spend far too much time with sexual toys and therefore have kind of ruined their own like natural sex drive towards men so they don't get off as easy is as easily um they don't climax as easily. I just think it's kind of a bad gig all the way around sexually. Do you agree? Do you have anything to add? I would say when you're taking them out, just know that, you know, I'm sure they're working to, you know, to show them a good time. Yeah. Does that make sense? I mean, you're probably the only break, the only adult break that they've had. Yeah. Months. Weeks, months, you know, I mean, if they just broke up with a guy, they were basically doing the wife thing for him. You know, it's your chance to really just have fun. Yeah. You know, they're really looking to go out and have a good time, get a few drinks, and have sex. I mean, that's a perfect So you night. disagree with what I just said? No, no, no. I'm saying that when you go out, that should be your mindset. All you know, across the board. Exactly, exactly. I mean, the, the outcomes are all, you know, depending... It really comes down to you and the girl and the chemistry. But your mindset should be, I'm going to show this girl, not a dancing monkey, but you're there for a good time. Uh-huh. Yeah. I mean, that's that's what I would say you need to convey mentally. And then the outcomes will take care of themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Because they're, I, I'd say that relatively newer on the market, you know, or... Anybody to, just coming out of a any girl just coming out of a breakup, want she wants to fuck a lot. Yeah, they want to experience some things. Yeah, but generally speaking, the question what on the table is about whether single moms or never married, no kids girls are easier to bed. So that was my thought there. Is there a question? Would you say that single girls have a longer list of must-haves because they can't? afford to make a mistake because they are running out of time when we're yes about yeah for sure so the older a girl gets the less time she has to find the perfect scenario which is why i mean i see a lot of girls we see a lot of girls who are in their late 20s early 30s who are almost like forcing the guys in their lives not whether they're a good match or not to to like become a, a, a husband to become a father to they're forcing him to like want to do all of these white picket fence you know lead up rules because they're trying to fit a round peg into a square hole because their clock is ticking so the the later in life a girl is without having experienced the wedding the marriage the kids the house all of the things that are on our, our to-do list from the time that we're children are coming to fruition. And whoever happens to be in that boyfriend spot when, when our biological clock, which encompasses all of these things, starts taking the, the more that we're going to try and fit just kind of whoever's in our lives at that time into that, into that position. So does that answer the question? Anything else? I don't have any okay okay um i wanted to talk next about best text openers and i just think this is a good one because um in a sea of hey hi you know girls are clearly terrible at at texting they're terrible at it they're terrible at making conversation one of the things that fort worth said about me whenever we met on an app was I was one of the most chatty people on there. I actually responded. I actually was interested. I actually asked him questions. Uh, I gave real responses from the get go. And I've I've posted all of our like opening conversations before, which was really fun. Uh, but there's just there's not a lot of that out there. What you'll run into instead is hey, hi, and a lot of these uh, apps these days also require you to require her to make the first step because you know that way she doesn't feel like 
like Match makes you feel, where you're just being bombarded by a ton of messages all the time, and it's it gets to be insane. So giving girls the power to message first is actually a really smart idea, but at the same time, they really should up their game in how they respond and how they reach out and how they start their conversations with you guys so that you feel like um, she actually wants to be there. So I love, we always love Playboy Apollo's Hey Woman. I mean, it's just, it's so perfectly classically aloof. It's not um, desperate sounding. It's very uh, outcome independent. It's, it's just a good way to kind of snap her out of her, whole, her doldrum of every other message that she's giving. So I would say, hey woman is a really fun way to show that you eh, can take it or leave it if she answers. Um, are fun and ballsy because anybody who's going to say, "Hey, woman," is your first as your first contact with somebody must you know be pretty fun uh, fun to to chat with. Um, but then there are also people I would say that that's not a great thing for guys who maybe are a little bit more intellectual because I feel like that kind of intro would feel a little bit beneath you and I totally respect that. So if you're a little bit more serious, I would say a lot of the apps are really great with um, kind of giving you thoughts, uh, talking points, you know, ask her about this, she loved this, this was her greatest adventure, this was her most embarrassing moment. I think Fort Worth was perfect at this because he said, his first message to me was, uh, it says that you stripped your way through college and I should ask you about that. Of course, my, my profile said nothing about that. And that's not, you know, any of the, the starter questions that I had shared. But it was hilarious. And it was just a great way to get the conversation going. And it didn't have to have any context whatsoever to get my attention. So I thought that was a really good one. Anything that you can say that's fun, flirty, not inappropriate, um, and is different than every other hello, hey beautiful, hey gorgeous, oh my God, you're so beautiful, how are you on here? That's what a lot of guys that are not your competition are out there doing. They're saying, oh my God, how are you on this? How are you single? How are, you're so beautiful you know, how do I get a date with you as they're opening? And it's terrible. It's, it's a total turnoff. It's a, a pussy dryer, you know, Sahara desert. Then there's, I would say the text openers for coming back around, like to a fuck buddy, to someone that you have a relatively, you know, uh, regular experience with and so you just kind of are craving her and you want to set something up that's when hey or hey slut or you know <laughs> any you know any of these basic one word or two word you know reach outs texts work great because she gets the message if she's your fuck buddy it doesn't take much for her to go I'm free on Tuesday. What are you doing? You know, is Tuesday good for you? I'll be there. So it just depends on the level of the girl. If it's a brand new girl, hey woman, I hear you stripped your way through high school, you know, whatever it is, think fun, think flirty. Don't compliment. Don't ask her why she's single. Don't talk about childhood trauma. Just be easy and outcome independent. Those are those are some of our biggest tips for you on on text openers. I think it's you. I feel I'm, like you're I'm laughing about because <laughs> you always get one of the dogs in the chat room and he's like playlist goes, Hey, how can you skip dates and go right to hookups? That'd be great. That'd be great for a lot of people. God, I'd say that's prostitution. Good. He's, he's getting right down to it. <laughs> How do we skip the whole thing? Let's just skip all that bullshit and just fuck. 
and I, I say prostitution or sloppy bar sex. <laughs> but that's, that's usually pretty uh, unmemorable, I would say. So how would you say that a guy would skip the date and go straight to a hookup? I, I just answered oh, that. Okay. I said prostitution or sloppy bar sex. Seriously. Yeah, that's true. You, you have to put forth some effort, some effort. You know, I would, say, I would say the only way that that's truly, like, predictably possible to skip the date and go straight to sex is social circle. Um, or just familiarity. So um, I would say like a great example of this is someone that you see every day at school or like if you're in college, if you see them every day at the gym and you have a pretty good rapport, you know, all of these kinds of things really add to the availability of quick sex because all it takes is showing sexual interest and her showing sex sexual interest for you to be able to quickly turn that and have her in your bed within hours. But that's still a long game thing. I mean, make no mistake, that's, it may be circumventing a date, but you still have to plan ahead and have that rapport with someone, have, have that social circle communication with them. So I would say if you just need sex and you don't want to take any girls out on a date and you don't want to play a long game like gym game or school game or getting to know her in any way, shape, or form, then the best way is just to hire it. That's the way. What else? Anything? I don't see anything right now. Okay. Um, you know... The bar thing, the bar scene is great for quick sex. It's parties. Like parties. Even like friends parties. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Um, it's great for quick sex because then at least there's alcohol flowing. There's plausible deniability. I was, I never do this, but I was drunk. You know, that kind of conversation is really good uh, for quick sex, but it's, maybe not going to be the highest quality and it may end up getting you um I don't discourage it but at the same time you can end up with I hear a lot of horror stories about guys getting like kind of psycho girls locked in on them after fucking them the first night at the bar or whatever like immediately without really knowing them at all it kind of gets it can get a little bit ugly faster I would say with that kind of fast sex. The next thing you know, you have a stalker, you have someone slitting and slitting your tires, you have someone calling your or contacting all of your ex-girlfriends or ex-wives or whatever. It's it gets ugly fast whenever you kind of don't go through the proper steps. If that makes sense. We can't vet them as well. You can't yeah. well you're not vetting them at you're all. Not vetting at all. Yeah. And not just your ex-girl, your girlfriend. Well, yeah. yeah, I mean, if you're fucking around and, and yeah. you hook up at a bar and she... She doesn't know. She Well, she doesn't care and she doesn't have anything to lose. So that's where you get the crazies faster is if you don't go through the proper steps, you want quick sex, you don't, you don't bet them, you don't take them out on dates, and that's when you end up with, like, stalkers. In like a creepy way. I'm going to ask you a question. Okay. Other than the penis size, which I think is probably the most common question. Yeah. You know, for men. What is the most common question you've been asked in the last five or ten years? You yeah. Know, if you, as you've been in this space, what do you think the most common question you get? Five. No pressure, but this. No care. Well, I would say it's it's how to get, how do I get my girlfriend back? Okay. And I, oh, that's, you know, that, and that's one of the reasons it's one of the topics today is it's a super popular question that I get, have gotten since 2018, since I joined this space, is how do I get my girlfriend back? And, I mean, we talked about it, but the, the short answer, the first response I always give is, why do you want to? Do you really want to? Do you, what, what broke you up in the first place? And can you now suddenly live with that? You know, because it matters. It matters. 
it'll it'll nothing fixed it. It fixed anything. And usually in this, let's say in a lifetime of relationships, yeah, getting an ex back is a very teeny tiny portion of it. You know, you may have that three or four times, maybe. Yeah. And usually, you know, as opposed to you know one itis, you know, you should probably talk about where people fall into that. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? I mean, when guys lock in on one girl, you know, how do you get them to break that? Yeah, exactly. So what Fort Worth is talking about is one itis, which is where you can't get past wanting to get that girlfriend back. You can't get past thinking about how wonderful she was, how you fucked it up, how you wish you had that, how you haven't been able to find anyone as good since, how the dating market sucks, all of it. Everyone gets compared to this girl. And you've got to break that cycle. I do have a book on it. It's, it's kind of a funny book because I wrote it in 2018. I have since revised it. The link will be in the description box. But it's fascinating to me because it's kind of one of those sleeper books. It's like I wrote it specifically because I was getting asked about or, or talking to men who couldn't get past this one girl. And they couldn't get past wishing they had her back or comparing everyone to her. Or they, they truly were stymied even in sexual performance. Even if they were getting in front of other girls, they couldn't perform as well. They couldn't stop thinking about her. They couldn't keep their dick hard in the moment because it wasn't with her. And so I wrote my one itis book specifically for that problem. And it's just the short answer is getting in front of as many girls as possible is always the cure. Distracting yourself and making yourself the best possible version of, your, of you that you can be. So bringing your best health, bring your best fitness. It just, it all works together to kind of get past thinking that she's the only girl out there that could ever make you happy. There's no such thing as soulmates. And it's, you know, there are a lot of girls out there who would be really good fits for you. So pretending that one is the only one out there for you is something brought to you by Hallmark, and it's not the real thing. It's not the real situation. Um, so next I want to talk about a really fun survey that I put up. I, am pre I was actually pretty tickled by this survey. Um, I asked, this is specific to married men, but I asked the married men out there, I said, when was the last time you had sex with your wife? Now, I want to say on the front end that surveys are always a little bit dangerous, whether it's something presented in a magazine, whether it's presented on Twitter, whether you see it anywhere, because it's all based on self-reporting. Any survey that's based on self-reporting, people tend to say what they want to believe, what they want to believe about themselves, what they want to believe about their lives. So of married men who answered my survey, uh, which was probably also the least participated in survey that I've had, but that's because it's centered on married men specifically. So of the married men who answered my survey, 34.2% said within the last 24 hours, which that's awesome. I will take it. This is where the self-reporting self came in, though. I was like, I don't believe it, but I like it. Uh, two to five days had 31.6 married men said that they had had sex within two to five days. 14.9% said it's been at least a week which probably means closer to two, let's face it. And then 19.3% of the men who answered said maybe in the last month, which probably really means three, four, maybe last time he had a birthday, maybe last time, you know, he drove her crazy begging for it. And this is just not healthy. If there's anything that you know about me from Twitter in particular, it's that Sex is absolutely the most important thing in any relationship. And the sexual uh, 
nature of your relationship is all that determines the actual health. All of this being said, I need to make, make a, a quick statement for the honest out there. I'm not talking about people who are actually injured to the point that they cannot perform. Those are special um, circumstances and special populations and not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about able-bodied, fully functioning men and their wives. Their fully functioning, able-bodied wives. Uh, most of them have more able body than they did when they first married. But if you are not having sex, whether you are married or whether you are in a relationship of any kind, that makes you roommates. It just, it makes you, um, it just, the connection is lost if you're not having sex with the person who is the only person that you're doing this with. Your roommates, your buddies, your friends, maybe, and a lot of times you're not even that because whenever the sexual relationship is strong, you're able to be more united together. You're able to kind of fight the, fight the fights of life together better. You're able to deal with the children better. You're able to deal with in-laws and friends and coworkers and bosses. You're able to roll with all the frustrations of life so much more smoothly and united with your your other half so much better because your sexual relationship is strong and intact. It's just that important. If you you know, I think I think you should have sex every day, twice a day, as many times as a day as you can possibly, but at the same time whatever makes you happy. One thing that we talk about quite a bit is a lot of men have a normal sex drive. They are happy with having sex one, two, three times a week and having time to fish and go out on their four wheelers and go mudding or go play golf or whatever it is that you like to do as your pastime. You just want to be able to have a happy, healthy relationship and a healthy sex relationship adds to that also because no woman who's getting fucked like it's her last fuck and and being fucked into a puddle and is happy in her marital relationship or her sexual relationship with you is going to bitch at you about going and spending four hours playing golf because she's literally recovering. She's a happy camper. She's got that blissful, blissed out look on her face that comes with orgasms and cum and just exercise. You know, it all plays in and it all, huh, it all, <laughs> I'm getting excited just thinking about it. We should probably end this yeah, broadcast because I'm like, we should probably go have sex. But it makes all the difference in the world in the relationship health and in the way that you better deal with other things. What do you think? It's great. I thought that I thought my my survey was pretty interesting. I don't actually believe that 34.2 percent of them had had sex within the last 24 hours, but I hope they had. So all that being said with uh, our, our sexual survey here, I want to share a course that I've come up with that I'm launching. The enrollment is now open March 2023. The next session will be in October of this year. So you've got a spring session and a fall <coughs> session. Ignite your wife and it is a 30 day sexual reset for all you married guys out there who haven't had sex in a month or three weeks or however long it's been, I want to help you uh, reset your sexual life so that you can have a higher quality rest of your life because everything is better, everything is easier, everything is more fun when you have enthusiastic, regular sex. It's a good thing, it's a good thing. Any other comments or anything that we need to discuss? The link will be on your Twitter. The link is in my Twitter. The link is in my Twitter to ignite your wife. I'm so excited. This has been so much fun. I'm having a good time. Are you guys having a good time? Also, so this is going to be, um, this is going to be a regular thing. I think I like this Sunday morning time slot. You guys let us know either 
uh, in the chat below or, you know, by DMing us or whatever you want to do, however you want to reach out and let us know when a great time for you would be. Uh, but Sunday mornings work really well for us. If you guys are at church, you can always watch it later. Go to an earlier service, go to a later service. Also, we can like improve your, your uh, guy life here. I'm all for that. I don't recommend skipping church to talk about sex with, with Bunny, but, you know, more power to you. I hope that you guys have enjoyed this. All of our links will be down below, and we share them all over the place, so there's no secret to how to find us or how to find our products. Um, I love that you guys are also listening to our podcast. That's a lot of fun. We have a lot of fun with it. And keep the questions coming. I appreciate you being here. I guess I'm going to sign off for now. This has been great. Thank you guys so much for making my inaugural Bunny Show Live so fun. Now I have to figure out how to turn it off. <laughs>